Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel Biological Concepts. In today's video, we will going to discuss on prion, an unusual infectious pathogen that cannot contain any nucleic acid and cause deadly neurodegenerative disease in human and mammals. Prions have attracted enormous attention not only for their unique biological features but also for their impact on public health. So stay tuned in this video. In 1982, Stanley Prusiner proposed the term prion and for this discovery he got Nobel Prize in 1997. So for the discovery of prion, uh, Stanley Prusiner got the Nobel Prize in 1997. The word prion is derived from the term proteinaceous infectious particle. Basically, they are proteinaceous infectious particle. The prions are misfolded protein, and this protein is in misfolded conformation. Okay. The interesting feature of prion is that even they do not contain any nucleic acid, they are capable of infecting and proliferating. This is in contrast to other known infectious particles, that is virus bacteria, protozoa and other parasites which contain nucleic acid either DNA or RNA as the genetic material. But prions do not contain any nucleic acid. They only consist of protein and this protein is misfolded. The host for the prions are mammals. It may be either animal or human. So, for prion host is human and animal. They cause disease in human and animal. No prion disease of plants are known, although prion have been found in the east. Prion cause a variety of neurodegenerative disease in mammals. Now before discussing what is prion, and how they cause disease in animals and humans and which disease are caused by the prion. Let's discuss some important terms on prion. First is PRNP. Basically this is a gene. A gene in our DNA that codes for prion protein. And this gene is located in chromosome number 20. Next is prion protein which is denoted by PRP. Basically this found is found in healthy animals mostly in neurons and especially in the brain. It has two isoforms one is PRPC and other one is PRPSC. This is the diagram of a normal cellular prion protein and this is the image of PRPSC that is scrapy prion protein. This SC, this SC means scrapy. The scrapy in sheep was first the prion disease to be discovered. And the uh, afflicted animals lost coordination of their movements and tend to scrape or rough in the skin. That is why the disease name of the disease was scrapy disease. And from this scrapy disease, the term scrapy prion protein was discovered. Okay. And this is the alpha helix. And this one is the beta sheet. If you look at these two images, you can easily see that the in PRPC, that is in normal cellular prion protein, alpha helix structure is predominant. Whereas in beta sheet, in uh, sorry, in PRPSC, that is in scrapy prion protein, the beta sheet is predominant. Okay. Now let's discuss some dif important differences between the PRPC and PRPSC. PRPC stands for cellular prion protein. C means cellular. And PRPSC is the scrapy prion protein. This SC means scrapy. This is the normal form of the prion protein. 
as this is the abnormal form or misfolded version of the prion protein. This normal cellular protein is non-infectious as it is found in healthy animals, in special, in mostly in neurons, especially in the brain. Whereas this PRPSC, this is the scrapey prion protein is infectious and it causes disease in human and animals. The alpha helix structure predominant in PRPC that is in cellular prion proteins. Whereas the beta sheet predominant in the scrapey prion protein which is a misfolded or abnormal version of the prion protein. The scrapey prion protein that is the PRPSC protein has the same primary structure as like the PRPC that is the normal cellular prion protein but a different fold. And this is due to when this PRPC is converted to PRPSC, there is a, uh, there the alpha helix content decreases, whereas the beta sheet content increases. As a result, in PRPSC, the beta sheet predominate. The PRPC is cell soluble whereas the scrapey prion protein is insoluble. This is protease sensitive and this scrapey prion protein is protease resistant and this protease resistance is due to the predominance of this beta sheet which make it protease resistant. Now how the prion protein cause disease? As we have already discussed that the PRPC is the normal prion protein which is always present in the healthy animals, healthy animals and healthy uh, human. So, whereas the PRPSC is the misfolded abnormal prion protein which is the infectious in nature and cause disease and responsible for causing disease. Now Due to some reason, there is a conformational change in this normal prion protein and this conformational change causes this normal prion protein to scrapey prion protein which is the infectious form. It is the abnormal or misfolded form and, uh, and the reason for this conformational change will be discussed shortly. Now, once the PRPC is converted to PRPSC, and this PRPSC has the capacity to bind to this PRPC. Okay. And it convert this PRPC to PRPSC. Okay. As a result, more and more PRPSC, that is scrapey prion protein, accumulates. And this accumulation occurs in the central nervous system. Due to this accumulation of this uh, scrapey prion protein, the amyloid like plaques form there, which disrupt the normal cellular structure, forming a hole in the tissue. So, uh, due to the accumulation of the uh, PRPSC, the amyloid like plaques form, which uh, disrupt the cell structure, forming the hole. As a result, the vacuole formation. Vacuole formation occur, vacuolization or vacuole formation occur in the neuron, and it gives like a spongiform appearance. And this spongiform appearance is the characteristic feature of the uh, prion disease. This is the image of the spongiform degeneration, and these are the vacuoles. See, these are the vacuoles, and it uh, it looks like a spongiform appearance. Okay and which is the characteristic feature of the prion disease. Now, uh, we have already discussed that due to some reason, the PRPC, that is normal prion protein, is converted to uh, PRPSC. That is, the, there is some uh, reason for this uh, conformational changes. Now, what are the reasons for the conversion of PRPC into PRPSC? First is... Uh, PRPC can undergo conversion into PRPSC through spontaneous misfolding. So there may be the spontaneous misfolding which uh, causes this PRPC to convert into PRPSC. It's a genetic mutation in the human PRNP gene. The human PRNP gene which is present in the uh, in our in human body 
uh, and it produces the normal prion protein. And due to the some uh, genetic mutation in the PRNP gene, it form the PRPSC that is the scrapy prion protein which is infectious form. Exposure to a prion from an external source. If you want to expose, uh, expose uh, uh, to a prion from an external source, there may be conversion of the PRPC into PRPSC. So these are the reasons for the conversion of PRPC into PRPSC. Why this exposure to uh, prion from an external source cause this PRPC into PRPSC? Because we have already discussed that the PRPSC has a uh, capacity to bind to this normal PRPC and convert them into PRPSC. That is a scrapy prion protein. Okay. Now, let's discuss about the prion disease. Now, prion disease is a type of proteopathy. This proteopathy means a disease of structurally abnormal proteins. Now, uh, this prion disease is caused by the scrapy prion protein. The prion protein which is the abnormal version. And this abnormal protein is, uh, is responsible for causing this prion disease. And this uh, scrapy prion protein is abnormal form or the misfolded prion. So, uh, as we uh, know that the disease of structurally abnormal protein is known as proteopathy. So, prion disease is a type of proteopathy. Okay. Also known as transmissible spongy form encephalopathies. Spongy, why spongy form? We have already discussed because uh, 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 due to uh, the vacuolization in the neuron, there is a spongy form like appearance in the in case of prion disease. So this is a spongy form, and why encephalopathies? Because it affects the neuron or especially the brain. That's why the encephalopathies. So this is is also known as transmissible spongy form encephalopathy. A family of rare progressive neurodegenerative disorder that are transmissible and fatal. It is a, a neurodegenerative disease and it is also fatal. It affects both humans and animals. As their host is both human and animal, so it can affect both human and animal. Affect the structure of the brain or other neural tissue. That's why the encephalopathies. Okay. Name. This is caused by the aggregation and intracellular sp spread of a misfolded prion protein. We have already discussed how the aggregation and intracellular spread of prion misfolded prion protein cause this disease. We have already discussed. The characteristic spongy form changes associated with neuronal loss and failure to induce inflammatory response. Okay, so spongiform changes occur in this disease we have already discussed and there is a neuronal loss also discussed and another characteristic feature is that they are failed to induce the inflammatory response. This is also a characteristic feature of the prion disease. Now what are the examples of prion diseases? As we have already discussed prion, uh, the host for prions are both uh, animal and human. So they cause disease both in human and animal. So now it causes disease in human that is human prion disease occurs by prion also and there are some animal prion diseases the human prion diseases includes Creutzfeldt jacob disease that is cjd variant Creutzfeldt jacob disease that is bcjd fatal familial insomnia kudu etc whereas animal prion disease include bovine spongiform encephalopathy chronic wasting disease scrapy Transmissible mink encephalopathy, feline spongiform encephalopathy, ungulate spongiform encephalopathy. These are the examples of animal prion diseases. Now, what are the symptoms of prion disease? Following are the symptoms of prion disease. These are developing dementia, hallucination, fatigue, stiffening of the muscles, confusion, and difficulty spinning in speaking. These are the symptoms of prion disease. Next, discuss about the risk factors involved. What are the risk factors that are involved in causing the prion disease? First is, people with genetic history related to prion disease are at risk of prion disease. 
So if there is a genetic history related to prion disease, the people will get the prion disease. Eating meat infected with mad cow disease increases the risk of prion disease. If one eat the infected meat that is uh, uh, infected by the mad cow disease, there is a risk of uh, prion disease. Contamination of medical equipment and contaminated corneas can cause prion disease. So if the medical equipments are contaminated with the prion protein or the cornea is contaminated with the prion protein, there is a, a chance of causing this uh, prion disease. So as the prion aggregates are stable, they are quite uh, resistant to protease, heat, ionizing radiation and formal dehydrate treatment. Although their infectivity can be reduced by such treatment, Effective prion decommendation re relies upon protein hydrolysis, reduction or destruction of prion protein's tertiary structure. The examples include sodium hypochlorite, sodium hydroxide, strongly acidic detergents such as LPH. Now, sterilization of prion is uh, recommended by WHO, that is World Health Organization. Any of the following three procedures for the sterilization of all heat-resistant surgical instrument to ensure that they are not contaminated with prions. Why only heat resistance? Because uh, this, uh, these procedures are applied only for the heat resistance equipment, surgical instrument. Okay, not any for any heat sensitive material because height causes the heat sensitive material to destroy. So this is only applicable for the heat resistant surgical instrument. First uh, is that uh, increase uh, immerse in one normal sodium hydroxide and place in a gravity displacement autoclave at 121 degree centigrade for 30 minutes. Clean, rinse in water and then perform the routine sterilization process. Next one is thus immerse in one normal sodium hypochlorite for one hour. Transfer instrument to water heat in a gravity displacement autoclave at 121 degree centigrade for one hour. Clean and then perform routine sterilization process. Third one is immerse in one normal sodium hydroxide or sodium hypochlorite for one hour. Remove and rinse in water then transfer to an open pan and heat in a gravity displacement in a porous load. Autoclip for one hour. Clean and then perform the routine sterilization process. So these are all about the prion in prion diseases. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.